So welcome to the Aspen interview series on lipids and parental nutrition. I am Jay Martello, uh, clinical practice specialist for the American Society for Parental and Natural Nutrition and Professor Emeritus at the Ohio State University College of Pharmacy. It's really a pleasure for me to be the moderator or uh, interviewer for, for this series. And in this series, we're gonna be discussing lipid emulsions with prominent experts in the field. I'm gonna focus on the lipid emulsions that are available for us in use now, but also on omega-3 fatty acids, the use of lipid emulsions in a variety of different patient populations, as well as a, a discussion of cost effectiveness of parenteral lipid emulsions. Um, it really is a thrill for me to be able to uh, get to talk with the leading experts in the field right now. And today's expert is Dr. Manpreet Mundy from the uh, Division of Endocrinology, Diabetes, Metabolism, and Nutrition at the uh, Mayo Clinic College of Medicine and Science in Rochester, Minnesota. Welcome, Dr. Mundy. It's a real pleasure to get to talk to you about this important topic. And I'm looking forward to uh, any of the questions that uh, the questions we're going to be going through. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, let's get right into the questions. I'm sure the audience is going to be interested to hear your perspective. We're going to focus on the long-term uh, home parental nutrition patients or patients that uh, may have chronic intestinal failure. So with our first question, are or should lipid emulsions be an integral part of long-term parental nutrition therapy, especially home TPN or chronic intestinal failure? Yeah, great, great question. And uh, I really think at this point, anyone would disagree with the statement that lipid emulsion should be an integral part of parental nutrition therapy in patients on chronic intestinal failure, uh, HPN. Um, and really the data to support this starts, I think, with the infancy of HPN in the US. Uh, as we were discussing before, um, that was a time where PN was typically provided without lipid emulsion, since those lipid emulsions were not available in the US, but instead were available in Europe. So during that time, without those lipid emulsions, most of the non-protein calories were provided from dextrose. And multiple reports and case series found significant complications, such as steatosis, uh, hyperglycemia, and even pancreatitis was reported. Uh, additionally, many of those patients, especially those who relied solely on parental nutrition for their nutritional needs, were also developing essential fatty acid deficiency uh, from lack of essential fatty acids such as linoleic acid and alpha-linolenic acid. Uh, so these are fatty acids that our body cannot produce, uh, and we rely on external sources such as plant-based sources. So without these fatty acids, you know, we can develop a number of complications such as uh, skin complications, rash, uh, wound healing, as well as decreased growth in infants and children. So studies from that era, once lipid emulsions became available in the US, showed that when you provide a third of the non-protein calories from lipids, you can dramatically reduce these complications. And that's sort of been our target since. So I don't think anyone would question that lipid emulsions are an integral part of parental nutrition. That leads us really into the next question. And that is, uh, you know, one of the major complications uh, that we talked about before we got online is the uh, impaired liver function that uh, patients with an, uh, uh, intestinal failure have a tendency to uh, get over long-term parental nutrition on PN. So what was the practice prior to having uh, the mixed lipid, uh, mixed oil lipid emulsion available with fish oils? What was the practice prior to that? Um, absolutely. So because of all those benefits, I think we really tried to provide lipid emulsions as a third of um, our non-protein calories, but unfortunately, you know, in many cases, uh, we struggled. Um, predominant lipid emulsion before these mixed oil emulsions was soybean oil, so 100% soybean oil-based lipid emulsion. And soybean oil tends to be very rich in essential fatty acids, as it's almost half linoleic acid and about 7 to 10% alpha linoleic acid. Uh, you know, depending on the formulation. But unfortunately, that linoleic acid also is an omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid. And when it's metabolized by the elongase and desaturase enzymes, 
uh, it generates arachidonic acid. And this is where the problem starts because that arachidonic acid then generates pro-inflammatory um, mediators such as uh, leukotrienes and prostaglandins. Um, additionally, soybean oil also has a great deal of phytosterol. It's, it's a plant cholesterol and being 100% soybean oil, uh, it is rich in that as well. So uh, that raises another difficulty in that our body doesn't have a great deal of uh, mechanism to dispose of those phytosterols, especially when it's given intravenously. So combined, um, you know, these, these along with uh, short bowel syndrome or other chronic intestinal failure associated anatomical changes uh, start to lead to complications such as intestinal failure associated liver disease. And we saw this quite often. So when we tried to give soybean oil-based uh, lipid emulsions every day, um, it was almost impossible. And quite early on, we started to shift most of our patients to three days per week, giving them just enough to prevent essential fatty acid deficiency uh, and then really also prevent uh, any sort of liver abnormalities. In some patients, you know, uh, when they did, despite going down to three days per week, uh, develop uh, IFALD, we would often have to reduce the lipid emulsion even further, going down to once a week or every other week, uh, just to meet the needs of that, uh, to prevent essential fatty acids. So that was kind of the practice uh, prior to these mixed oil uh, lipid emulsions coming on the market. Yeah, that seems contrary to what you've said before regarding you should give a third of your calories as lipids to reduce your carbohydrate load. It kind of defeats that purpose. Uh, and so and it also leads to the next question as well is, you know, now that the mixed oil lipid emulsions are available, the balanced uh, lipid emulsions, how has that changed your practice? Uh, so pretty dramatically. Um, so early on when these started to become available, we focused on those patients who were intolerant. Uh, and, and we consider that intolerance, you know, if they had an allergic reaction or uh, mainly uh, predominantly those individuals who had liver disease uh, that was uh, in, in the presence of soybean oil uh, lipid emulsion. We transitioned those patients uh, to the mixed oil lipid emulsions. And we were very conservative in the beginning. Uh, if someone was on uh, soybean oil-based uh, ILE um, once a week, we then, and let's say at 50 grams per day, we transition them to 50 grams per day once a week of the mixed oil uh, lipid emulsion. Uh, but soon we started, as we were following those patients, we started to notice that their liver numbers were actually getting better. And we then started to increase the dose of that lipid emulsion and, and started to uh, see that, you know, this didn't worsen the, lipid uh, the liver numbers and instead, the liver numbers kept getting better. So we then you know, took a look at our practice over one year. So patients who had been on mixed oil lipid emulsions for over a year and found that the vast majority of them when we transitioned were, on, uh, were receiving about 10% of their calories from lipid emulsion. So you can see how far we were from that ideal goal. Um, and, and within a few months of them switching, we were able to get them well over 20%. And we continued to increase month by month the amount of lipid emulsion we could get. And this was all occurring with the liver numbers improving. In fact, total bilirubin in, improved significantly. So I, I think learning from that experience has allowed us to transition a lot more of our patients to the mixed oil uh, lipid emulsion with, with fish oil. And so that's allowed you to get closer to that goal of 30 to 33 percent of the of the calories as lipids. Yeah, and and not only that, but it's it's the first time that we're commonly seeing patients receiving lipid emulsions on a daily basis. And you know, as an endocrinologist, uh, you know, giving that high dose of dextrose always bothered me. Uh, <laughs> we in fact had some patients who were in the hospital. One of our patients developed pancreatitis, and I checked insulin and C-peptide levels as I was rounding and, and saw that they were, you know, significantly elevated. So we were essentially uh, almost causing diabetes in this individual if we had continued in that direction. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think people don't really appreciate the potential complications of hyperglycemia or that you know parental nutrition di induced diabetes uh, on long term patient outcomes as well. Um, have any other experiences you want to share with regards to that before we wrap up the session? Yeah, absolutely. And I think we've just continued to gain more and more experience. Uh, what we've also uh, worked on now that 100% uh, fish oil uh, lipid emulsion is available, uh, you know, with an indication in the PEDS cohort, uh, we have been using that in some of our patients um, uh, as an off-label. Uh, use. And that has also been very effective in this group uh, with uh, liver abnormality. So I, I think, you know, for us, we're very excited to see the developments that are occurring in terms of lipid emulsions and uh, can't wait for the future as we continue to evolve this practice. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's really exciting to see that we've got these options that maybe can help us liberalize our concepts regards to use of lipid emulsions in patient populations, especially this really, I consider, at-risk population uh, for complications from parental nutrition itself, the long-term home parental nutrition patients, or even the ones with, uh, and, and also the ones with intestinal failure. Um, yep, absolutely. I really thank you for sharing your experiences uh, and your information uh, uh, with regards to lipid emulsions. I'm excited to see, based on you know, our summaries, uh, new lipid emulsions available, so we have some choices. Um, uh, if the, the audience would like to see more information, uh, the topic of lipids and parental nutrition was uh, published as a supplement in the February issue of JPEN in 2020, and that can be found at www.nutritioncare.org. Uh, and if you haven't listened to the other interviews in this series, I really suggest that you take a look at them uh, in order to see uh, what individuals are, are the experts in the field are really doing with uh, the new lipid emotions and their choices and different patient populations uh, and uh, listening to what their outcomes are. I think you'd be uh, interested to hear that uh, varied perspective.